Um, it's very short. Um, my name is Yuse Lee from University of Tübingen. Thank you very much for this, uh, for the invitation to this wonderful workshop. Um, Professor Song Song Han uh, from Seoul National University and also the staff members and behind, uh, especially uh, Ms. Min So Yeon for organizing this. Um, so, sorry. Uh, so my topic is uh, meritocracy and ethnicity in, uh, of Korean Germans. <clears throat> um, I had a um, 2008 to 2010 um, project with um, a second generation group, Corientation, uh, with the title um, Model Minority of Integration. Uh, in the early 2000s in Germany, there were um, hot debate about uh, integration of um, um, guest workers and uh, their children. And, um, and the Koreans um, were um, in some discussions and debates um, called as um, the modern minority. And in 2010s, the Vietnamese um, uh, follows the, German, uh, the Koreans as also as a very good integrated um, um, foreigners in Germany. And uh, this, uh, on the left side, you see a, a poster with the title uh, From Guest Worker to Education Elite. And uh, we were questioning um, this discourse of um, model minority because there were, um, we, the Koreans were not the model minority, but they were making the Koreans to a model minority and uh, were asking uh, about this discourse and arguing um, against it and problematizing the in integration policy in Germany um, in total. So, um, but to come shortly to the historical background, um, um, Koreans in Germany um, were mostly from 1960s uh, and 70s, um, about 20,000. Um, 8,000 miners and um, circa 12,000 nurses. And they came as um, guest workers. And um, the motivation to leave um, Korea and come to Germany was um, mostly by most of them uh, escaped from poverty in South uh, Korea. Uh, and um, work in uh, underground and in the hospitals was very hard, uh, very um, challenging, physically very challenging for um, the Koreans. And after they have settled in Germany, they um, left the um, uh, mines, the <coughs> Korean men uh, were um, um, uh, left the um, mines and went to factories and so they were mostly factory workers and um, nurses were still in hospitals and um, were working as caregivers. And um, the settlement itself was not uh, that easy um, because of um, the um, permission um, um, of uh, residency in Germany and and uh, also the workplaces were not that uh, good that they, they have had to change several times their workplaces um, and um, many of them retired uh, earlier um, in the early 60s uh, already. So this is um, short uh, the background. Um, of historical background of the first uh, generation. And I uh, published a book about uh, the, the life um, story of, of the Korean miners in Germany. Uh, and uh, I was asking about the um, everyday discrimination at work. And um, the answer I was um, expecting was, oh, there was uh, every day, every time, everywhere <laughs> discriminations uh, against us and so on. 
but uh, the answers were um, a little bit surprising for me. Um, so I um, want to cite one sentence. Um, we were not well trained, couldn't speak properly, and were physically weak. That's why we were uh, disrespected. So the self-perception uh, of the Koreans at the time uh, was not that they were discriminated um, because they were Korean, Asian, or racial discrimination. No, this was a discrimination on the basis of uh, merit. And uh, so they thought uh, if, if we were discriminated, uh, they were, of course, they were discriminated. But their, this was their fault because they were too not well trained. Yeah? They were not speaking good enough German. Yeah? There were enough misunderstandings and they were too weak, um, physically too weak um, in comparison to the German miners. Um, so if um, they see the reasons of the discrimination like this, how can they overcome uh, this uh, discrimination. So, and overcome the discrimination is also a question of social mobility because uh, they see themselves as uh, in a lower class in the society and uh, the way would be um, a, a logical step uh, to have better vocational training. So after they have um, left the mines, um, many of them uh, got a new vocational training, yeah, uh, but um, very short time, for very short time, and, um, uh, and went nevertheless to the um, factories. Um, they had to learn better German, uh, but they, in the first three years when they were in underground, they, they were not uh, enough uh, time to learn uh, the language. And there was not um, in, enough opportunities to practice the language. <laughs> and, and after three years, um, they, they didn't really um, uh, made it to um, have this big um, improvement in their language. And physical strengths, um, yeah, um, what can you do? Um, <laughs> uh, do more... Um, fitness and sport, uh, but um, you will not get bigger <laughs> and taller. Um, so uh, there was um, obviously limits in the improvement by themselves um, to get out of this situation, uh, this uh, structural discrimination. Um, and so the strategy of the first generation was uh, to say, okay, if we can do this, um, the next generation should, should do this. And uh, so they uh, invested a lot uh, to, the, for the second, to the second generation uh, in the um, education, uh, even in the um, high school, uh, junior and senior high school in Germany, gymnasium, and to send them to the universities. And um, so the social mobility uh, should happen through the education of the second generation. So if we see uh, the second generation a little bit closer, uh, we um, notice that 80, about 80% 80 of the second generation Koreans uh, make their abitur, that is, um, um, yeah, um, in, in German school system, the end of the high school and the permission to study at the university. Uh, and uh, in the, and the, most of them um, study prominently uh, e economy, law or medicine. So they, uh, to become a lawyer or doctor or or, or manager and, and so on. So they are um, pretty successful in, in their study. And uh, in, if you see the look um, to the German um, society in whole, um, there 
are only 20% of the children of working class Germans who go to a higher education. So 80 or 90% of the children of, um, um, from academicus um, study, but from working class, there are only 20%. And migrant children, um, their rate is um, even lower, lower than 20%. So if the Koreans as uh, guest workers um, study to 80% at the university, uh, it is um, uncomparable um, and uh, it's uh, near to a miracle that uh, the Koreans study uh, or at the university. Uh, of course, there are um, also other um, criteria uh, in classical sociological matter, uh, high rate of binational uh, marriage, low rate of unemployment and low rate of crime and so on. So um, that we can consider the Koreans in the second generation, um, they are very good and very successful in the German society. Uh, but um, after they have interest uh, through their edu um, very good education and, and um, um, uh, in the middle class or in the German middle class, they experience still um, hard discrimination. And um, what we call this uh, <laughs> glass ceiling, yeah? um, the higher you, can, you come in your job, uh, the the harder is your uh, experience with this um, glass ceiling. So you don't really see the limits, uh, but you feel it. And um, so uh, even you have made it uh, to come to the middle class, a member of the mid German middle class, uh, you still have this everyday discrimination. And uh, in the last few years during the Corona era, um, we um, see that it, this um, kind of uh, discrimination has increased. So uh, what is the problem? Yeah? Um, they did what their um, parents said, but they are still <laughs> uh, discriminated. We see in the, we had a, another project about uh, second generation oral history in Tübingen. And this is the cover of this book. And in this book, um, we see a third generation um, talking about the self third generation um, schoolgirl. So uh, after having um, um, have been insulted as a school from a German boy, Chinese, Chinese, Ching Chang Chong, um, everyday discrimination in Germany, uh, you face um, everywhere as an Asian. Uh, and uh, the, the school girl of third generation Korean um, answered, um, I cannot help it in German, kann nichts dafür. Or he's just like that. There is halt so. Um, and this was um, for me very in interesting that this, um, because in the second generation, you know, you ignore this or you. Um, resist directly. Yeah? Um, I'm not Chinese like this. <laughs> but this girl says, um, I cannot help it. Or he's, right like he's just like that. And uh, it means um, that this girl, third generation girl, um, say, says, so it's uh, not my fault that I'm looking like this, as Asian or as Chinese or as Korean. And uh, I don't think I can overcome this discrimination by merit. So uh, by doing better um, than the Germans uh, and uh, with higher score in the school and, uh, and better study at the university and so on. So what this child is saying is that the problem of the migrants is not their own, but also the problem of the majority society. So the, the boy, the school boy um, is, <laughs> um, is not right uh, in the eye of this uh, um, generation girl. 
and and uh, ethnicity is for her a part of their uh, of her own um, personality and it cannot be changed so cannot be changed by merit yeah or doing well something else so it's part of uh, her own personality and identity so what we can see in, in transgenerational um, development is uh, that, that the first generation has missed this intersectionalism between class and race. They thought if they can overcome their class situation, then there will be no problem anymore as a migrant. But education uh, as the only way for social mobility um, had a high cost for their children. Um, and uh, success to be successful um, does not really mean that they are happy afterwards. And uh, this anti-Asian racism, uh, which um, is now developing in, in, in Germany in the last few years, um, is an is, uh, everyday discrimination which um, were the, the first generation were also facing, but they didn't really um, percept this like this. So inclusion is not one way and, uh, and absent of in integration, not a default of migrants. So the model minority, um, to come back to our project from eight, 2008, uh, two, 2008 um, should betray the majority um, so society or at least their expectation and um, and and they should um, make uh, more solidarity with those um, migrants who are um, depicted as um, problem makers and so they can work against the categorization and hierarchization in the German society. And uh, what I wanted to show is that uh, there's a limit of uh, the meritocracy, how the German society is, is talking. So if you are better in the school uh, and so on, and you enter in the middle class in Germany, all problems will be solved. solved. Uh, but it is not the case in a multi-ethnic society like uh, Germany. So thank you very much. I think we have still you have plenty of for discussion. Yeah, there's plenty of time for discussion here. Thank you so much. Um, and actually, uh, I do want to. I didn't have the content available uh, to me before, but I would like to provide a, a more detailed introduction to uh, Professor Lee. Um, he studied history and Korean studies and philosophy uh, and political science in Berlin. And he received his PhD in, uh, in history with a dissertation in Christian missionary work. Uh, and he has done work as a research associate at the Free University of Berlin and the University of Bonn and uh, has been a junior professor for Korean studies uh, at the current university now. And so I just uh, didn't have your, your content available to me before, but we're so happy to have you here. <laughs> okay, Thank I'll you. take open uh, discussion now and questions. And you can also add your questions in the chat. I didn't want to be a question hog, but I do have a question, uh, Dr. Lee. The, I'm familiar with the model minority um, theory and uh, research in the context of the United States, where Asians uh, students are um, pointed to by researchers and teachers as the model minority. And uh, this group of students is used to um, to demonstrate to other students who are racial minorities in the US, oh, you, you could be 
like these students. You have the same opportunities, but you're not working hard, these kinds of things. And so it tends to um, pit the students against each other in a contest that's not real. Um, and I know there are many other ethnic groups in Germany, for example, the Turkish uh, community. And I'm wondering if you uh, can say anything about how the history of different minoritized people, how they've come to Germany. Um, are you seeing similar uh, sort of issues with using this model minority concept to praise one group and to, you know, reprimand another? <laughs> yeah, um, thank you very much for this um, question. Um, yeah, the most of the guest workers in Germany um, were from mid 1950s mm -hmm. until early 70s um, from southern U European countries. So exceptions are Turkey or Morocco and Tunis. Mm -hmm. And um, and um, all of them are not good at school. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. One small exception is um, Spanish. Um, they were exiles and 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 um, trade union um, uh, members um, who were in Germany, and they were pretty good. They were about the average of the like the average of the Germans. Um, Forty percentage of them, their children were in higher education. But all the others were not good. And in the early um, 2000, um, this, this discourse of, about integration and model minority um, um, occurred and it developed, like you said, to show the model minority as a mirror for, for the problem makers who did not um, make it. And to say, okay, if you are, are working hard enough, um, see uh, how the Koreans, the Vietnamese has, um, uh, has been successful. And we were arguing at the very early um, period of this um, phase of this um, discourse to say, no, we don't want to be the model minority because mm -hmm. this discourse um, is categorizing the um, um, migrants and uh, to the good and bad, yeah, and there's um, there's a clear hierarchy between the um, my, uh, migrants to say, okay, those um, are welcome and these are not welcome to German society, and uh, and we were also empirically sh showing that uh, even those who are well. Um, integrated and a uh, member of the model minority was still facing discrimination. So it's not to say, okay, if we do all um, everything uh, uh, for um, to be integrated in the society, does not mean that the discrimination will uh, uh, disappear. Mm -hmm. So at this moment is the question, uh, what does the majority society in Germany doing for a better integration? So how do they change themselves? Not mm -hmm. the, not only to saying the migrants have to change. Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, and this um, uh, if you see the mer mer meritocracy discourse, the um, migrants uh, should be better. But if you see the racial structural discrimination of the society, then we can finger to the society to say, okay, the society itself has to change to integrate or include those uh, migrants. Yeah, and, and this was our um, position at that time. It sounds like you're doing important advocacy work. Yeah. Are there any other comments or questions? I think Professor Song had, you were going to ask a question. We have about a minute and a half. Yes, just a, a short question. Uh, 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 Dr. Lee, could you elaborate on the integration of uh, uh, Vietnamese uh, uh, people into Germany, including the, 
the Vietnamese from the former uh, GDR, uh, former East Germany? Yeah, there, there are two groups. After the Vietnam War, there were both peoples in West Germany, but the bigger um, um, group is uh, Vietnamese, um, we call them contract workers in GDR, East Germany, uh, during the Cold War. There were about 80,000 uh, Vietnamese in the, in the GDR. Uh, but uh, after the unification, um, most of them returned to Vietnam, uh, but um, about six, um, 16,000 uh, were still remaining in um, the uni unif unified Germany. So, but they didn't um, have the permission for residency, so they were illegal in, at that time. And um, during the um, time when there were contract workers, um, they were not allowed to get uh, to, to marry in, in Germany. <laughs> they didn't get any permission for marriage and they were not allowed to get any um, children. Uh, so most of the children were born after 1990, yeah. Um, and in the early 2000, they were in the age of in the high school, mm -hmm. and um, they um, saw that the Vietnamese um, children were pretty good at school, mm -hmm. and and afterward they, yeah, many of them um, went to higher education, so they. Um, followed the steps of the Korean Germans, yeah, and uh, they are in the um, in the in, in the group in the in the migration um, history about ten or twenty years younger than the second generation of the Koreans. So um, the the Vietnamese um, are very um, closely working together with um, Korean Germans um, now. And uh, but they were also facing a uh, hard discrimination, discrimination right. directly after the uh, unification in the early nineties. So, 